And here we are in the press box at the Horseshoe in Columbus. Um, pretty nice stadium, and we actually saw a pretty good football game for a change. A lot different from, from some of what we've seen this season with the Hoosiers. Um, still, same result, a loss, uh, this time 34-20. to 20. But it was an interesting game. I, it was tied at halftime. IU was, was re really in the thick of it right up until the fourth quarter, uh, an interception by by Trey Roberson, sort of sealed the deal up for for uh, Ohio State to give him the win. But it, but it was an interesting game right up until the end. Um, joining me, as always, are Alex McCarthy and Justin Albers. What are your thoughts on the game, guys? Um, again, you know, after a, after a couple weeks of IU kind of either taking a step backwards or not taking a step forward, it was uh, almost refreshing to see you know something different. Seeing them make some str some very visible strides, uh, six sacks on defense. That's the most in uh, three years, I think, and the most in a Big Ten game since uh, 2007, I think. And offensively, they click. They were clicking a lot of the time, um, but it's you know it's it's a, a good sign for IU's defense mm -hmm. that they at times really slowed the the high powered run game of. Uh, of Ohio State. I mean, they still gave up 300 yards rushing, almost 350. But it, it you know, it didn't seem like they gave up that much. Mm -hmm. um, Though they did allow three different players on Ohio State to run for over 100 yards, which is yeah. is not a good sign. But Justin, what what did you think? The big plays were a problem again, but I mean, you saw less of them I think this week. And part of that maybe has to do with the fact that Ohio State's not a good passing team. It seems like both of the uh, good performances from the IU defense in the Big Ten this year have been against teams that don't really throw the ball very well, Penn State being the other one. So you can limit them to the run. I mean, Braxton Miller had an 81-yard run early in the game. That was a killer when IU led by 10. But they kept bouncing back, which was good to see, uh, even when they fell behind 20-13, to 13, went right back down, scored a touchdown. And with a young team like that, you like to see those positive gains. The big plays are going to be a problem, I mean, especially with the young guys that they're playing and how many of them. But to see the number decrease against a team like Ohio State in an atmosphere like this, I think is a positive going forward. And, I mean, it's hard to look at this game as a negative because of the bad things we've seen from this team the last four weeks and giving up 40 or more every time and just not looking good at all on defense. I thought you, you saw an improved football team today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this has been our – Ohio State team that has sort of been hitting its stride recently and an, an IU team that obviously hasn't with, with the losses just piling up. And so I think a lot of people thought this game would be a lot more lopsided than it was. And so there really are some, some positives to, to take away from this game, even with the 300-yard rushers for, for Ohio State. Um, but Trey Roberson is definitely slowly but surely coming into his own for IU. He led the team. He was the only quarterback for the team today. Uh, who attempted a pass at least, and uh, was was a respect respectable eleven for twenty one. Had a touchdown, had an interception. The touchdown was a, a pretty nice one to a wide open Kofi Hughes, who really stepped up today, and and he really needed to coming into this week. That was sort of sto of a storyline with with Deweese Wilson now out for the season with Marlo Belcher off the team. This is the receiving core is is Kofi Hughes is group now, and and he really stepped up to the challenge today. I thought, yeah. yeah. For sure. I mean, uh, Kofi didn't. I mean, a few weeks ago, it seemed like maybe he was going in the opposite direction. We talked to him after the game when Wilson said the receivers had a terrible week, and he kind of shook his head and looked really angry at Wilson at that time. And then it was like the next week when he starts talking more positively and saying he's been having better practices and he's starting to buy in. And I don't know if part of that maybe was the influence he was under by Belcher. I don't think Belcher really bought in uh, to Marlo Belcher bought into what Wilson was selling, and I think Kofi was a guy that looked up to DeMarlo, and so maybe he followed him a little bit too much, and now that DeMarlo's gone, Kofi can completely buy in. He's got two years left after this. He's a guy that they're going to build around in this offense, mm -hmm. so it looks like he's a guy that's completely bought in now. He's getting the most out of his talent. I mean, that's the best I've seen him ever look. There's a play where on a deep ball he was interfered with, and he still had the uh, – the mind to go up there and make the catch, even though they were going to call the penalty. And those are just the plays that you haven't seen out of this team this year. 
and Kofi has the capability to be a leader of this offense when he plays the way he did today. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, like you said, on, on that play where Kofi was obviously, there's obviously a penalty on the play, but he still, you know, kept playing, uh, as they say, you know, at, even after the whistle, um, or even after the penalty, at least. <clears throat> Excuse me, at least. Um, that's, that's something that we actually did see um, a, cu a couple times from Belcher this year where he was, you know, obviously there's interference, and I remember one time where he was interfered with and then, you know, just accepted the penalty and didn't go for the ball, um, where it could have been a big completion. But, yeah, like you said, Kofi's really starting to come into his own. And last week Wilson said that they're going to try and get – he was more involved in the offense. You know, he only caught one pass for 12 or 14 yards last week. And Wilson said, you know, we've got to use him. We've got to use him more. We've got to get him at least one catch. Uh, and they they got him eight of the 11 catches today for 147 yards, which is by far the most receiving yards this season for uh, – for any of the wide receivers, so we'll see if that continues in the in the coming weeks. But that was definitely definitely one of the big bright spots. Just to continue real quickly the comparison to Belcher, I mean, we talked about maybe the reason he struggled this year is because he didn't want to be the featured guy in the offense. You lost Handon and Terrence Turner from last year, ter uh, Turner to graduation and ter uh, Doss to the NFL, and Belcher never really wanted to be that guy. But the week after they lose Belcher and Deweese Wilson, the two guys that you would have thought were ahead of Kofi Hughes, he steps up and has the biggest game. So that's definitely have to, has to be a positive sign that maybe he feels comfortable being the guy in this offense, especially <laughs> in that wide receiver group. And he did say after the game that he, um, you know, he, he kind of wants to be looked at, or he's, he's satisfied with people looking towards him for leadership. And he says that... Um, you know, through a lot of his upbringing, he was kind of a natural leader. So maybe this is a role that that is really well suited for him. Maybe he's really well suited for that role. So we'll see. We'll see that as it moves forward, especially on, a, on an offense with so many young guys. Uh, it, you know, he referred to himself as one of the older guys, and he's a he's a true sophomore. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know that that just tells you something about how young this team is, how inexperienced that they are. That they're looking to a sophomore for um, you know for leadership. Mm -hmm. And you both mentioned how, how he's, he's a sophomore. He has two years left. And that's true at least uh, for, for quite a bit of this offense, which we're really starting to now see see develop and make some strides. And so that has to be promising for the future, that, they have, that they're probably playing their best offensive ball of the season with a true freshman quarterback, a true sophomore leading them in receiving – uh, a true sophomore or a sophomore running back who has only been on campus for a couple of months yeah. as ha clearly being their, their go-to running back and a butt freshman playing all across the, the offensive line, and yet they're still playing the best ball they have on that side all season. So that's a really promising thing going forward for them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think Colin Rowery played the whole game at center, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, you know, he's injured, a, Will Maddie's injured right now. And, right, right. Even though Maddie practiced a lot this week, um, you know, Wilson's just very confident with Rarig with a lot of the young guys, mm -hmm. and obviously has no hesitation getting them involved. Mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see this really turn into Wilson's team and the guys that have have proven themselves to him, not to the past coaching staff, but to to Wilson mm -hmm. are are becoming the real contributors and the driving force behind this team, especially on the offense. And we've talked about buying in the whole year, and it finally looks like the guys that they have playing now have bought in. They've gotten rid of – I mean, some guys have quit the team and all that, and those appear to be the guys that didn't buy into what Wilson had, and that's fine. But now he has a team full of guys that he wants here, guys that are buying in, and, and you saw a better product today. Mm -hmm. Well, ne next week the, the Hoosiers have their bye week. Um, pretty late in the season for that. Most teams they've played have, have already had it, but I think I – think in some ways, this team has some momentum that they need to might want to worry about losing, but in the other sense, this might be good to, to help some injuries to people like Will Maddy heal up. And, and the next time we'll see them on the field will be in, in two weeks against Michigan State, at Michigan State. Um, Michigan State, a team that's had some, definitely had their moments this season, so that should be an interesting game. The Hoosiers won't be the favorites, I'm sure, but we'll just have to wait and see. But until then, uh, I'm Max McCombs, joined as always by Alex McCarthy and Justin Albers. Take care, everyone.